Hello everyone, we are talking about The Wild Beyond the Witch Light. We have a lot more information about this book. Chris Perkins spoke about the fact that he, for 11 years, has wanted to do a Feywild adventure in 5th edition, and uh, now we have it. It is all about the Witchlight Carnival, which is a mirror of the carnival that we find in Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft. Now, if you're familiar with that carnival, what essentially happened is there was a Feywild Carnival and a Shadowfell Carnival, and eventually they showed up at the same spot. And the owners decided to switch ownership of those carnivals. Now, we've got two Shatterkai that are in charge of the Feywild Carnival, and now we have someone else who's in charge of the uh, the Ravenloft Carnival. Now, uh, if these two carnivals ever do meet up again, however, that means that the ownership shifts again. And it is part of the plot that these owners of the witch-like carnival here in the Feywild that's associated with the Feywild is owned by Mr. Witch and Mr. Light. And they do not want to trade the carnival back. Uh, very interesting uh, development there. Um, this is a very good way, you know, this carnival will go to m multiple worlds, some worlds like every eight years this, this carnival will show up. A lot of the inspiration was, you know, sometimes the inspiration actually came from things like Ray Bradbury's um, Something Wicked This Way Comes. That was also a really fun movie that I loved growing up as well. And that's why, you know, Mr. Mr. Light is kind of a reflection of Mr. Dark from that book. Uh, so it's a nice wink and, wink and a nod. Um, there's an amazing map in this book of the actual witch-like witch -like carnival as it is usually laid out. Uh, it's very mu much looks like an amusement park <laughs> map, <laughs> which is very charming. It even has a little section on time that is passed on this map, as well as the mood, and that becomes very important to this adventure. And time is very much a component of the adventure as well. Time... Uh, if you didn't know, moves very differently in the Feywild as well as the Shadowfell. So we may be seeing some very interesting time hijinks here. So the Witchlight Carnival very much has an entrance, basically a way of getting into the Feywild itself. And once you're in the Feywild, you will find that there are domains, much like the Dread Domains, but these are called Domains of Delight. And they're similar to the Domains of Dread, and each of them, however, is controlled by an arch fey that has extreme power over each of these domains. They showed off some really fantastic art, uh, one of which was the Palace of Hearts of Desire. Uh, they uh, showed off artwork of a treant, a massive treant called Little Oak, who has a treehouse built into his back. And uh, children live in that treehouse, and they have a displacer beast kitten named Star, which is just way too adorable. It, it, I get the impression, impression this adventure will be very lighthearted. Chris Perkins did mention that any challenge in this book can be solved with, certainly, combat, but every challenge could also be solved in a non-violent, non-combative way as well. You can, get your, you can get out of this by talking your way out of things or multiple other ways, and that's very exciting to me that you have that option. Not everything is going to be a knockdown, drag-out fight unless you want it to be. The carnival has a lot of attractions. They've got different NPCs like a mermaid, a mime named Candlefoot. There's a Kenku that's up to, 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 to no good as well. Um, in this domain, you're going to find a lot of colorful characters, both Fey as well as some intruders that are coming into the Fey Wild that are uh, potentially dangerous, as well as classic characters from D and D years gone by. Because time works differently in the Fey Wild, they will be bringing old school D and D characters back. Some of them from the D and D animated series. This is going to be very interesting. And and when you look at the map. Uh, for Wild Beyond the Witchlight, for the Carnival Witchlight, there is actually a roller coaster, and it is virtually identical to the roller coaster that you find in the intro to D&D, uh, &D, the animated series from the 1980s. This can imply a lot of things, that that entire amusement park was, in fact, the Witchlight Carnival in disguise, uh, but it is a direct tie into... Um, that D&D &D animated series and, and that they're bringing some things back 
uh, in this Feywild adventure. So very, very cool stuff. It turned out from from the feedback, the playtesters who played this adventure loved the carnival. Um, there are a lot of other nods to things in the past. Uh, there are a lot of weird challenges that you will find and games that you can play within the carnival as well. And uh, one odd example that Chris Perkins gave was there's custard damage uh, at some point. And I do, I, I'm here for it. I'm very excited. It's a very lighthearted adventure as described. And uh, there's some other interesting tidbits. There will be some player options as well. So we do know that uh, there will be new backgrounds, the Fey Lost, for characters who actually grew up in the Fey Wild. And Witchlight Hand for characters that were part of the Witchlight Carnival. Uh, the other interesting thing is that they, we are getting those two new races from Unearthed Arcana, not including the Hobgoblin that we saw before. That is ex that's going to be in a future book at some other time. But we are getting fairies, and we're going getting the Harrigon, which are the rabbit folk. Harrigon is. Uh, you know, here and gone. Like, they're very fast, plus hair. Plus hair. It's kind of an in-joke, but very much speaking to how fast rabbit folk are. In the official press release information they gave us, uh, they do say that War Duke, Strongheart, and Kellick, my favorite evil sorcerer, is going to be in this book from the classic uh, animated 1980s series which is going to be really cool. I think this is going to be a very wild and charming adventure with, with lots of nods to the past and probably some nods to the future. Uh, but uh, the artwork is just charming. And, and uh, again, you know, the fact that Chris Perkins has been wanting to run and roll, I mean, and create this uh, a Feywild adventure for 11 years, uh, you can only expect people poured their hearts into this. And we are getting a lot more definition into the rules and how the Feywild works. Um, because we know very much about how like the domains of Dread and Ravenloft work. Now we're getting that kind of level of information with the Feywild, which is uh, very exciting. I'm very excited for Kellick because I ha still have a Kellick uh, uh, 1980s action figure in the box. So, yeah, I'm a little biased, perhaps. But I am very excited to see Kellick. Kellick is kind of very representative of the 1980s. Um, if you're aware of Legend by Ridley Scott, there is a character who is trying to collect a unicorn horn. Kellick does something very similar. He's collecting unicorn horns to gain power uh, in that adventure. So... Uh, yeah, I'm very curious of who is going to pop up in this Fey adventure. And that's everything you need to know right now about the Wild Beyond the Witchlight. Very exciting stuff. Uh, very charming art. Great callbacks. I, uh, I can't wait to play it. So, thank you so much for watching. Again, the Fe the uh, Wild Beyond the Witchlight, a Feywild adventure, comes out September 21st, 2021. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe and support future videos uh, I appreciate you. I hope you're having a great day. Thank you so much for watching.